Do you want to even go into the air tangent now, or... Like I said in the news video, I think uh, Adobe dropping air for Linux, it sucks for a couple of apps, and I've, I've heard a few, couple of people mentioning like a couple of games that are going to be lost. Other than that... I, well, I, I use a number of air apps um, uh, uh, that, like, that do simple functions uh, and things that I actually use for work. Uh, and I, I, I like the air apps because I can just use the same one on Windows, Mac, or Linux. Or, or I could Windows, Mac, or Linux. Uh, however, I have to admit, and the, the, one of the primary reasons I threw this in here is because it has to do with the 1% myth. Uh, what the reason Adobe is dropping is because they're not really seeing much more than one percent accessing it. You know, they're not getting this huge surge of Linux people going to Adobe and downloading Air. Uh, and I'm like, I realized something. I never got Air from Adobe. I, I'm not actually using the Adobe Air Pack. I'm using the one that was in my repo. Uh, which and that is probably the case. Yeah, yeah, w which would be built on the project they're continuing, which is the, you know, they still have the Linux porting kit that will allow distros to create a pack that they can put in the repo yeah. for people to download and continue to use Air applications. And they're going to continue that project for this latest version of Air. So that will continue to go on. And it occurs to me, this is probably the case for 90% plus of Linux things. Like, we don't go... To, uh, unless you're using uh, Ubuntu or some canonical based distro, you know, most people using end user uh, Linux, they're getting things from their repo. They're not going to adobe.com. They're not going to so and so and so and so and such and such. They're just getting the pack that their distro put in the repo and, and did things in like 90% of the time, which means there's no way to count that metric. Uh, the, because it's getting unless the distro themselves does, and then but but it's probably going to be flawed anyway. Well, no, and say so that that's the thing. It, it, that's like it, you can't trust the metric somebody counts themselves. There's a reason if you want to do advertising of any kind, you use some outside company like Google or PodTrack or some or whatever to say, "Hi, this is the outside company that verif that that takes care of all my metrics." I could do it myself more efficiently and give you a lot more information, but you would accuse me of fudging my numbers. So I send everything through them, who has no vested interest whatsoever in what I'm doing. So, you know, so, and, and that's the thing. I'm like, how would you resolve that where you, you, in like the package managers, where you get an accurate count of all the stuff going on in there and being shot of usage and so forth? in a way that's anonymous enough to keep the conspiracy theorists and the tinfoil hats and the privacy nuts happy, but will actually provide the market share metrics that companies like Adobe and people who want to develop software so that you actually get counted. Because the reality is because of that particular problem, I'd say 90% of desktop Linux doesn't get counted. Well, and the way to work around that, you'd almost have to do something like you said with analytics, uh, where you add something into the download path, where you know if this gets hit, it records it into a log file, and then it, everything probably is logged somewhere. I guess maybe the logs would just have to be made visible to someone else, but even then, log files can be modified. So yeah, well, and the other thing is the reality is most uh, I have yet to see a distro that isn't using. A uh, 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 up team bajillion mirrors. So yeah. forwarding all of those mirrors through a single counting source kind of defeats the point of having the up team jillion mirrors to balance the load. You know, yeah. it's like. Uh, well, but if if you were only forwarding the statistical information to the the counting resource, the metric resource. Well, it would take it, a lot of the load off of it. But still. I, I, the the way most of those work. Uh, is what you do is you basically forward the request through the counting URL. So you basically you'd send every single request through bottleneck URL that would then forward it back out to the mirrors, which means every mirror would get bottlenecked into the counting service. And it, it'd create a forced bottleneck because the counting services are not as distributed as other things. You know, it, 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 no matter how you did it, that's a bottleneck because every single request to get to the up team bajillion mirrors 
has to go through that bottleneck, and which it's got to wait for them to process. It, they're literally form a queue line to process getting access to the mirrors. <laughs> and even then, you, you wouldn't be able to report uh, that it was a successful install until the installation had finished, so that would be another hit on the mirrors or the repos or whatever. Yeah. Uh, because how, how many times have you been installing something and it failed the first time because the mirror timed out or that, and that, your connection went down, any something like that? That has actually almost never happened to me. But then again, I tend to go through and pick a mirror that is geographically yada yada to me as opposed to so forth. Uh, but yeah, that that can happen depending what mirror you're going to. So if if that if that happens at all, I, I just go okay. This is obviously not a very stable mirror. I need to be using a different one. That's uh, and now occasionally I've had them be ridiculously slow. <laughs> like at one time I was downloading something at 5K. I'm like, wow, what are you chiseling it by the bite? <laughs> like, but yeah, that's. I, at, at the end of the day, I'm not sure how you could satisfactorily solve that problem. Uh, it's because anything you do would would break all the innovations that have kind of allowed this to just all work cheaply. That's uh, uh, and I don't know how you could convince the industry to trust self-reported metrics, since as a rule you never do and especially coming out of a Linux distro they'd be like oh you're just claiming that <laughs> it's like okay no no, we're not it's our actual metrics damn it <laughs> it's like, we don't want to fudge them we actually want real numbers because they're of no use to us if we fudge them <laughs> but, and, and honestly I would think the developers of most distros and the team running the website and everything else have much better things to do than sit back and figure out how to fudge their metrics. <laughs> you know, they're, they're busy with other things. That, that's not a priority. They don't really care. <laughs> uh, out of curiosity, why don't you... Do you, like, never use air? Because, like, you... you you act like air isn't this thing. I just find this funny because Adobe literally got up and said, we're dropping Linux in favor of dedicating more attention to Linux. Because like they literally said, we're discontinuing Linux so we can dedicate more attention to, and one of the things they want to dedicate more attention to is Android. And I'm like, that's Linux based. <laughs> I'm confused. It's Linux based, but it's a base that they can guarantee views on to some extent. I, I but that's, that's always been the problem with, with using, uh, well, like, like we've been talking about, the not having the accurate metrics. Just Linux on the desktop usage. There's been an argument for so long, Linux only has less than 1% of desktop usage. Linux has 5% level. Depends on who you look at because there is no accurate verifiable metric for it. One site will say one thing, one site will say another. Who's to say that I've ever been to that site, or that I've been to that site with all of my Linux based uh, machines? I, my guesstimation is between five and twelve percent, and I say that based on an aggregation of up team bajillion metrics I look at to try and have an idea of the shape of the desktop ecosystem, which is something important for me to do for my job because I, I want to know what OS, what platform, what form factor, everything people are accessing stuff through. So I look at every... That, that's what actually makes Android a more viable platform to a lot of companies is because you're guaranteed, almost guaranteed, you're going to have Android users because they're buying a device that has Android on it and they can verify the number of activations per day based upon that. But uh, yeah, well, uh, and on that note, um, I... This is one of the reasons I, I was kind of excited about Air, and I liked Air a lot, and, and I and I still do like Air. I just wish they would, you know, get out of their head that you know, Linux is not what you think it is, uh, because um, I like the idea that indirectly what's been created there is a platform agnostic development thing, you know, and it, it's it's it accidentally it's kind of been supported by everybody which means you have the ability to create these agnostic applications uh, with modes uh, and it, indirectly it's a marketplace that can kind of circumvent around everybody because it's in it's on iOS it's on Android it, 
was on Linux. It's it's unofficially still on Linux. It's on OS X. It's on it, it. That's very useful. It, it's basically a framework you can develop for and go. Okay, we don't like dealing with your marketplace, so we're just going to go in and run around. You know, that's. <laughs> Uh, and, and it does some things you just can't do with HTML5. So, yeah. it, it, it's still limiting. You know, it, it's not as good as an actual application. But, yeah. Uh, that, that's, uh, God, we went off on three, three tangents there. Um, anything else we want to go into or do we want to cut a little short this week because I actually kind of half-assed doing some research here I'm getting back in the groove of things That's well, the, the last topic on the list I'm not terribly familiar with haven't looked at PC Linux in over a year probably so well uh, yeah I mean I, oh God, I, I forgot we didn't fully we, we talked you talked about it now but we didn't cover it now somebody asked like what I thought of the new, new distro hey, here's the thing PC lens a rolling distro uh, so I, I don't like the gray theme. Uh, it, it's it, it's weird. I should because like I the first thing I always do is get rid of the blue on my desktop and put like a dark colored background. But I don't like the gray theme they've gone with. It, it um if you click here, let, I actually got a link here. Um, I, I'll show you. So that uh, the image is the the new standard for the KDE version. Yeah, that that's the default background, and if you click that um, tiny URL on the home page, like the goo one. Being screenshots, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's you, you you see what they've done with the launch screen. Uh, with the sp I mean the splash screen and stuff, it's like it, it's it, it's it's, it's consistent though. It, it's consistent. Uh, it, it's not. It, it, but it, that, that's one thing PC Linux always got down. Whatever theme they go with, love or hate it, it's consistent. It's an overall experience, and they go for that. Uh, and, and the good news is it's Linux, so if you don't like this, you can change it. But it's like to me, it, it's a little too Macish. You know, it, it, it's it's aluminum to me. It, it, it's like it's just like it's not my cup of tea. Uh, but this goes back to the you know what I've said a dozen times, and you know we've all said this. No matter what you pick when you pick something like this, some people are gonna love it, and then some people, as in my case, not gonna like it so much. But yeah. it's like I said, I've already changed my splash screen on the things I've updated and changed my login theme and so on and so forth. So it's like the first thing I went in and changed because I, did, I didn't like it. But uh, it's rolling distro. It's, they're going to keep on. And, you know, the updates are solid. They're on the latest version of KDE. They've updated Synaptech. They, they update a lot of things. They've updated the kernel not to version 3, you know, to... Uh, to one of the later version 2.6 ones and, and so on and so forth. So, you know, overall, still like it. I, I just don't like the theme they're going with. Uh, every so often they come up with a theme of like, what are you thinking? And everybody likes it. I, I'm the odd one out who goes, I hate it. <laughs> like you said, that's the great thing about Linux. You don't like it, you can change it. Yeah, that, well, this is why I like Linux. It's like no matter what they pick, I, I don't have to like their I don't have to like their artistry. <laughs> <It's Yeah>. like, <laughs> uh, I, I I realize if you jump through several dozen molehills, you can kind of do that with Windows and OS X. But yeah, yeah I, it, to my knowledge, there isn't a way to change the Windows or OS X load screen. If I'm wrong, and so I'm sh I'm sure some fanatic. There used go. to be a long time ago, but I, I yeah, haven't yeah. seen a way for the later versions of Windows. Yeah, in, in, in XP, you could do stuff like style XP and other things, and you could get really creative with some add-ons and, and, and do things, but... It, it, yeah, I was thinking earlier than that. I was thinking like 95, 98. Yeah. You can totally replace that with whatever you want. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, but it's like 
a, as it gets as it there's like replace one bitmap file and you're done. Yeah, a, but as it progresses, it, like you say, it gets harder and harder to do that. You know, the the way you were doing it in XP was in some ways uh, basically hacking and kind of putting rootkits to take over default Windows stuff, uh, which. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure if you're finessed enough, you can do it, but it, it's one of those things, it's, be, it's become beyond the realm of most users to customize their machine on those two platforms now, which is, which is sad. Well, and that leads you to the question, how many people are actively wanting to customize their machine? I know Linux users, in a lot of cases, are the ones that really like to customize. I don't know how many Windows-based machines I've seen where it is the same. A lot of people using the default wallpaper. Uh, Mac machines are just the same. A lot of people using yeah. the default wallpaper. They're not moving the dock. They're not changing the settings. Well, no, and say so this is one of the reasons I think social engineering is so rampant on those things. All you have to do is a JavaScript to say, oh, what, what platform are you running? I know exactly what to make it look like <laughs> for, for a 90% success social hack. Uh, you, you know, it's like... I, it, it, you know, and it's the same thing with like those websites that uh, when you try and close the site, they pop up a thing that goes, "Hey, or, you know, they they have a JavaScript alert message that comes up that's like, blah blah blah. It's like warning, critical error. Click the blah button to avoid this. You know, it it, it they've overrid the leave page thing. But I'm on Linux, so I have leave page, not a cancel button. It doesn't. It's like it's like it doesn't work. The social hack doesn't even make sense. You know, it's uh, so yeah, I, which is I, 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 and honestly, I don't see that ever changing in Linux. I, I don't ever see all. Do you even if Canonical takes over like they want? Do you ever see a day that all Linux distros and desktops look the same? Like they have, they're identical. It's not, uh, and, and if you don't yeah, have, unless they find some way to force the user to have to use a certain thing, which at that point they'll be ostracizing like ninety percent of their target audience. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There, there, I mean, there it's can not, be there can be some general ground rules like you have in Unity, which people are already kind of crying havoc over, and like there's two schools of thought on that, which we've covered a dozen times already, so no need to go back into it. But still, you know, the, it, there is still some customization that look like, and, and to me, that's the best way to broke break social hacking because the diversity makes it impossible to guess what's on the other end which is a good thing you know it's, it's like it immediately sticks out as this doesn't quite smell right <laughs> even to grandma you know grandma grandma who knows nothing that doesn't look like everything else something's wrong there <laughs> it's like <laughs> and depending on the grandma that could be a signal to uh, let me click on that a few hundred times uh, <laughs> That's sad, sadly true. <laughs> and on that depressing note, unless there's anything else we want to go into, do we want to just kind of tail off? Okay. We will tail off and see y'all next week. <laughs>